lost grave site of Constable Henry Chad Christian. What do we know about it? Not a heap. We know it was buried on the heads, roughly behind a beach that had driftwood on it, according to the survey from Theophilus Jones. But let's wind things back a little bit and go back to how he drowned exactly. So this was from a Pyman River correspondent, as many newspaper articles were at the time from remote areas, so just from a correspondent who would regularly send in updates about what was happening. And we get to the point where Christian's involved. And the correspondent says, I cannot help noticing what erroneous reports crop into the newspapers at time. I refer to the late sad case of drowning of Mr. Christian. I may as well give you the truth as stated to the direct constable now here. On the morning of the 25th of November, Mr. Christian expressed his intention of going around to the Conical Rocks crayfishing and he started about 9.30. He tried to pull out of the river, but there was too much sea on at the time and no wind. Finding this, he attempted to come back in and beach the boat near the wreck of the schooner Spy. At this time, he would not be above his knees in the water and could easily have walked ashore, but it seems he was anxious to save the boat and the drawback swept him into the channel. At this time, he was seen by Messrs. Martin, Webster and Foster. Martin immediately ran around the beach to Mr. Richardson, who was in charge of Mr. Sutton's establishment and told him Mr. Christian's boat was swamped. Richardson at once jumped into a punt and proceeded to the bar but on his way, he was called out by Mr. Foster and Mr. Webster, who called out it was too late. He has sunk. However, he pulled on and went below the police boat, which was bottom up, and stayed about an hour and a half looking for Christian, and after a fruitless search, returned. So that was in 7th of January, 1880. So the next uh, correspondent we've got is from the 6th of August, 1880. So this was like eight months later. And at the point he comes to talk about Christian, he says, Landing on a point at the north side of the basin, and after scrambling through the scrub for some distance, reached the grave of poor Christian. No better spot could have been selected as a home for the silent. It is on rising ground, and from it can be seen conical rocks at the south side of the entrance, and the hugging rock at the north side. Vessels entering have to hug this rock as close as possible, and hence its name. The channel between it and the sand pit is only about 40 yards wide, and the depth of water varies from 2 to 3 fathoms. On the right of the hugging rock is another rocky inlet, which is as yet unnamed. As a portion of it much resembles one of those grim-looking heads to be seen in ancient cathedrals in the old country, perhaps the Gorgon's head would not be inappropriate. To return to Christian's grave, the spot is marked only by a piece of wood, but Mr. Matthews has been commissioned by a gentleman in Launceston to put a pine fence around the resting place and a slab with the name of the deceased and the date on which he lost his life at the head. It is to be hoped that the public will not permit the whole of the expense attached to the work to fall upon the initiator. So at the very best, it sounds like there was only ever a wooden fence around the grave and a, and a, a wooden headstone. Definitely would have been made of hewn, but in 140 years, there's probably not much chance of any of that being there. However, the biggest thing I take away from this is it is from rising ground and from it can be seen conical rocks in the south and hugging rock in the north. So what I've done, here we've got the original survey from Theophilus Jones. So this is 1887. We've got the grave site right here. We've got the hugging rock here. And we've got this sand beach with much drift timber. They're the main features. So if we go into the modern day, look at what this looks like. This is from the list. And this here, I assume is still hugging rock. 
This is likely the Gorgon's head that the correspondent talked about, Misery Island. He said to the right of that, there's a rocky inlet. And then we've got this little bay here. So this bay is where the beach is with the much drift timber. So I went onto the LIDAR imagery and you can actually see where the grave site should be. It appears that there is like some sort of little knoll. Like they said, it, it is on rising ground and from it can be seen conical rocks to the south and hugging rock to the north. So I'm going to say that this little knoll right here at the top of that knoll is where I want to get to today. So we're going to take the Arcadia 2 down to the Pyman Heads and when the passengers get off to go on the beach, I'll head over to the other side and I've got probably a 90 minute window to bush bash to the spot. I might even pull out the detector and see if there's any like nails or little bits of metal laying around and see how we go from there. So I've just had a chat to Norm, the skipper, and we both kind of came to the conclusion that an hour and a half might not be enough of a window. So luckily he's got a um, charter after the cruise for the Lover's Falls, and he's going to come and pick me up after that. So I've got until about four or five o'clock, which will give me yeah, a few hours to search the area. Here we are, Harwick Point. Norm the legend, he bought the uh, rubber ducky so I didn't have to pack raft. The original plan was to pack raft from over there to here, but uh, he bought the little tender. So we're all sweet. We're on the right side of the river. Go and find this track and then go grave hunting. Amazing up here. So I've come far enough along that I feel I need to head inland now because according to my map, the little knoll that I selected that lined up with Theophilus Jones' survey was up there about 50 to 70 meters in. And what I don't like about this is how thick that scrub is and the fact that it said it was on a little rise in and from it could be seen conical rocks in the south and hugging rock to the north. I've got a feeling that this spot isn't going to have that view. Which could very well throw a massive spanner in the works. So this beach right here, this is the, the sandy beach with much drift timber. Nothing's changed. According to Theo's survey, it was up here. A 
This is pretty thick going now, but I'm about 20, 30 meters off where my research put its money on. So I need to go there and stand at the spot. Oh, if I can get there. It's so thick. I don't have any protection for my arms. So I'm exactly where I thought could be possible and you can't see Hugging Rock to the north. So I'm not really favoring this spot. It is on rising ground and from it you can see Conical Rocks to the south and Hugging Rock to the north. I think it's got to be closer to the actual river rather than set back this far. I feel like I want to I want to see this Hugging Rock. I want to get a view of that. And then I think I can narrow in the field because there's only going to be a limited amount of spots in this section that you can see conical rocks and hugging rock at the same time. And I feel like if I can do that, I'll give myself a pretty good chance at, at finding it. You've got to remember, it was scrubby when these guys visited too. So it's not like it was situated in a spot where it had six feet of scrub and they just cleared a little patch. It would have had some sort of view or outcrop regardless of the scrub. So I think Theophilus Jones' survey is probably wildly inaccurate. There's Hugging Rock. You can just see it. Somewhere around here. See, even from here, you can't see Hugging Rock. But moving 10 meters across, all of a sudden it opens up. I'm gonna say it's gotta be this spot. He wrote, no better spot could be found for the silent. It is on rising ground and from it can be seen conical rocks to the south and hugging rock to the north. It, it has to be this. I'm gonna run the metal detector over it, see if I can pick up any targets. If there was like nails used in the fencing, they might still be here. a pretty good scope with a metal detector around here and no targets but that's not to say that it wasn't here because who knows how big the fence was that went around it like it could have easily been where the bushes are now and uh, not only that but a nail might not last 140 years especially if it's next to an ocean so it probably would have been the first thing to dissolve in comparison to the kiln pine that the fence and the headstone was made out of. She's probably long gone. Go and see if we can't find a couple of uh, kiln pine logs. There's some. This one here has been sawn off.
case you're wondering how you can cross the Pyman River, this is it. The barge. It's never had a bridge put over it. Back in the old days, there used to be people with the punts who would take people over for a fee. Hotels on either side. Heaps of people drowned doing it. And, uh, yeah, to this day, there's still not a bridge here. I'll show you guys some of the camping you can do here along the river. <clears throat> Best in the world, for sure. So we got the Huon Pine right here on the river bank. This Huon Pine is approximately 60 to 100 years old. It's pretty big. Compared to the ones at Stannard's grave, that's like at least double. So I would say that estimate is out by about a hundred years. At least 180. still have the biggest day tomorrow. Next time. Try and scratch out a living. Whoa.